All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So the New York Jets got an absolute steal in acquiring Hassan Reddick, former All-Pro, four straight seasons with double-digit sacks in exchange for a 2026 conditional third-round pick. Are you kidding me? Yes, I understand it. Reddick wants a new deal. Yes, I understand that he's 30 years old. Yes, I understand that we let Huff walk, which was very, very questionable. It still is very questionable. The Eagles picked him up. You know, we're replacing, you know, a young ascending pass rusher in Bryce Huff with the <laughs> with the player that the Eagles are replacing Huff with. Very weird for sure. But at the end of the day, the facts remain the same. The Jets are a better football team with Hassan Reddick. It seemed like the Jets didn't really want to bring Bryce Huff back. There was no urgency there from the organization, so he was going to leave anyway. It looked as if the Jets were really interested in adding another pass rusher despite already drafting two in the first round and having Quinny Williams as an interior pass rusher, along with the fact that Javon Kinlaw has been considered as a pass rushing interior defensive lineman, a defensive tackle. Uh, whether you want to talk about at South Carolina or with San Francisco, that's kind of his M.O. We were interested in Jadavian Clowney. He opts to choose the Carolina Panthers. Now, all of a sudden, we're flipping away a conditional pick in the you know distant future for Reddick. For me, I got to be honest, I'm still pissed about losing Bryce Huff, but you know what? He's been on the Eagles for weeks now. I would much rather have the defense roll out with a Hassan Reddick, one of the most consistent pass rushers in the NFL today, than without him, right? I would prefer Reddick over Clowney, uh, for sure, right? I think Clowney's a little bit more inconsistent, right? There's highs, there's lows, there's good seasons, there's not so good seasons. But with Reddick, it, it, it's it's par for the course, right? You, you know what you're getting with him, a fiery, uh, fiery defensive end. Again, we can point to the numbers, but he's an aggressive player. I, I, I like his motor. Uh, he's an aggressive player, which I really like. After a couple quiet seasons in Arizona, he really turned up in his last season with the Cardinals. And then, you know, once he hit Philly, he just freaking exploded. Last year, he had 11 sacks. The year before that, 16. In 2021, he had 11. In 2020, he had 12 and a half. I mean, this dude, like, he's all over the place. He's freaking all over the field. He gets after quarterbacks. Uh, you have to account for him. And quite frankly, he would be coming in, you know, to this Jets stacked defensive line, in my opinion, as, you know, the best outside pass rushing option that the team has. So, you know, we have now have to ask the question, what does the defense look like? What is this going to do? How is this going to impact this Jets squad really defensively here? And first things first, of course, they're going to be good. We know that. We have Sala. We have Ulbrich running the show. We have so much talent. I mean, it's almost like, like, like weird to think about how many first round picks, like first round picks the Jets have on defense. Let's quickly go down the list here. We got CJ Mosley, Quinnen Williams. Sauce Gardner, Jermaine Johnson, Hassan Reddick, Javon Kinlaw, Will McDonald, Solomon Thomas. Talk about talent. Right now, of course, guys' careers have panned out differently. Some are still young and, and ascending, but uh, I mean, just based off of raw tools, pure potential, lots of first round picks there. We have over, think about this for a second, we have over $70 million invested purely in the defensive line 73 i believe to be exact 73 million dollars in one unit is absolutely nuts to think about it's crazy so yeah the jets are going to be able to get after the passer no doubt about it i have zero concern zero worries about the jets affecting the quarterback the jets affecting protection I think we will be 1,000% fine. I felt like we were going to be fine without Bryce Huff, but now it's just kind of, you know, it's almost an insult to say that Reddick is, is the cherry on top because he's coming in as, you know, the most consistent, the most proven pass rusher out of them all. But, uh, I mean, man, you're, you're playing in a conference with Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen is in your own division, right? I mean, Stroud, Lawrence. What's going to happen with Will Levis? You know, the Titans are really loading up that team. Who else? Joe Burrow, right? Will Russell Wilson bounce back with Pittsburgh? Either way, he's mobile. Uh, 
you know, you got Justin Herbert with the Chargers now working with with Jim Harbaugh. What's going to happen with New England and their potential rookie quarterback? We have got to get after the passer. The New York Jets will do that in 2024. Uh, again, zero doubts. Of course, injuries are always have to be referenced. But uh, look, if we stay healthy, I think we are totally, totally fine. Now, of course, right, pointing out the obvious, if you add pass rush, it helps out the cornerback play right? The defensive back play, 100%. It speeds up their game. There's less ground for them to cover. There's less time for them to cover. But I think where this is really going to make the biggest impact is getting pressure on early downs, right? Because the Jets can rush from the left, from the right, from the inside, uh, from multiple ways, right? We did see Ulbrich actually blitz a little bit more last season, and I'm a big blitzer. I love sending blitzes at the quarterback, you know, I, I'm a big 3-4 type of person. Um, you know, just the amount of confusion, the amount of different things that you can show uh, and do out of that scheme, I really, really like. But it's not to say that in a 4-3, you can't cause that, you know, confusion. I think this really opens up the door for, like, different simulated pressures and whatnot because the Jets, again, can rush in so many different areas. Um, so, you know, you're, if you're thinking about just the data, right, the stats... If the Jets can get pressure, you know, cause sacks on the on those fur the, the the first and second downs, and you're setting quarterbacks up for third and longs, where do the most turnovers happen in football? Third and longs, right? Now you're pinning your ears back. You're in a situation where everybody knows you're throwing the football. You have two great corners on the outside, one really really good one on the inside of Michael Carter, along with again pass rushers from every which way four opposing quarterbacks, then you factor in Quincy Williams' motor at strong side linebacker, then you factor in C.J. Mosley's veteran presence, ability to break down you know, opposing offenses, understanding what they're doing, has a really, really high defensive IQ. I mean, he is the unsung hero of this Jets defense. I, I mean, man, you're really talking about a defense that, in my opinion, could be the best in football. That's not an over-exaggeration. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Jet fan and I'm excited I mean, really, where's the weak spot? Safety? Probably. But, you know, it's not a position that I'm, like, freaking out about, right? I, I don't think it's as... It I don't think it's as bad as when Salah's, you know, when Salah first took over, you know, where he rolled out the worst defense in football. I think a big part of that was because of the, you know, the, the poor safety play. You know, as long as we can have a range, you know, we have range back there. We have somebody who can cover a lot of ground, somebody who can really neutralize the deep parts of the field, keeping things in front of him. I think we'll be totally fine defensively. Here's the issue, though. Offense, right? Woody Johnson said that this offseason was going to be about offense, offense, offense. And yes, we have made huge additions to left tackle and wide receiver and right tackle, left guard too. You got Aaron Rodgers coming back healthy. You got Tyrod Taylor backing him up. But I, I, I think for me, when I'm looking at the defense, it's 100% complete, realistically speaking, right? Understanding that we're not going to have an all pro at every single position. The defense, given the cap, is a plus it, it, to me re, again realistically speaking it can't get much better right unless you have like this crazy situation oh quandre Diggs wants to come in on a cheap deal okay then we're you know <laughs> cooking with gas right but again realistically speaking i think the jets have a fantastic fantastic defense that has the potential to be a top the top defense in football offensively though i think on paper from a Madden perspective, can we turn injuries off? We are great. But the reality is we are bringing in a lot of players who are not only just older, considered you know older veterans, but also guys that consistently are hurt. Tyron Smith, Morgan Moses actually dealt with something last year, as we all know. Mike Williams has a long, long list of injuries. In fact, he's coming off an, you know, an ACL injury, um, and the Jets actually don't even know if he's going to be 100% ready to go for training camp. Um, which isn't the end of the world, you know, Williams is still an upgrade, but ideally, you know, if you're signing a free agent and you're going to be counting on him and he's going to be coming in as the second best receiver on the team, you know, you want to get him on the field as quickly as possible, especially in like a win now season uh, that the Jets have. Um, but with that said, you know, what is the backup plan at wide receiver? What is the backup plan with left tackle? What's the backup plan at guard, right? AVT, He's coming off a season-ending injury, too. He's coming off an Achilles. So 
I re- what's happening with the third running back on the team? Are we really going to roll out Brees, Izzy, and a rookie? I don't know. That that's a bit dicey for me. Uh, preferably, I you know I, I would like to see a veteran running back get added to the squad. And you know, it, it, I'm not sitting here nitpicking the team. This is just you know again, given the amount of pressure that is riding on the season, pressure that everybody is facing. Uh, given Rogers' age, it's unfortunately not like he's 29 years old. We got him for the next 10 years. You know, we're looking at a pretty short window. We need to continue to load the squad up. Load the squad up, right? You can restructure JFM's deal. You can extend DJ Reed, lowering his cap hit. There, there's things that you can do, right, to continue to maneuver the cap um, around. I'm not saying completely, you know, push everything into the future and restructure every co- restructure every contract and really make it difficult in future years. I'm not saying spend every single penny we have, but you know, I don't want to be going into uh, the off season as either a a really really thin team or b and uh, having these worries offensively that we don't have enough right we're, we're not as we don't have enough t- uh, uh reliable nfl pros behind the starters in the event something were to happen to tyron smith or mike williams or something like that now granted we still have the uh, the draft which is going to be freaking fantastic i cannot wait for the draft when, funny enough, when the news initially broke about Reddick, I thought that we were trading our third round pick this year. Then it comes out, it's a 2026. I'm like, sweet, let's freaking go. This is awesome. But um, yeah, we have still, we still have work to do offensively. But in my opinion, the defense is complete. There's really not much you can do to make this defense better. I really feel like it's at its peak right now. I mean, again, young players, old players, veterans, guys that have had playoff success. We have pass rushers from the outside and inside. Maybe you can argue we would need some help at stuffing the run. Uh, But I think uh, Fotu from Arizona is is going to be a nice underrated find uh, for Douglas and co here. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets. Thank you.